You were working at National Geographic for like 20 years, and did somewhere in there, did you see something? I'm just trying to think, yeah, like when well, did you become aware? Um, one of my heroes, musical heroes, this is, you know, dating myself quite a bit here, was a guy by the name of Woody Guthrie. Of course wrote, so, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, most people, a lot of, a lot of people you really <laughs> want to know who it is. But he, he worked with a, another guy by the name of Pete Seeger. Yeah. Now, I did a, uh, Woody Guthrie was dead by the time I really got involved in the music, but uh, Pete Seeger wasn't. And I went, when I was, I don't know, 1975, I went out to hang out with him. He was protesting nuclear power plants out east. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I was sitting with Arlo Guthrie, Woody's son, and you know Elizabeth Cotton and Don McLean, and all these sort of you know these guys that were involved in social issues, and you know trying to move the needle that way. And I remember being at the first annual Croton Point River Revival with Pete Seeger, and he's trying to clean up the Hudson River. This is probably forty some years ago, and I thought, you know, who this old guy trying to clean up this river? You know, what a poor fool. And I figured out Pete was probably the same age I am now. <laughs> you know, but, but that, uh, um, I mean, and now you look at, you know, I remember him saying back then, he said, someday people are going to be swimming, eating fish, and, you know, and sailing in this river. And I thought, what a fool. I mean, I wouldn't go near that water. Now stuff, kids are swimming in it. They're eat, you, know, you can apparently wow. eat fish in some parts of it, and they're, they're using it for recreation. Wait, and you were a photographer? You were there I was to a photographer. be a photographer. Okay, so you were taking pictures of these guys. Yeah, I was taking wow. pictures and writing, and writing stories, yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, so that was an inspiration. It's like, you know, yeah. it, it, when you're around people that are using music to inspire people, there's nothing like it. You know, anybody using their art to, and I was just telling the, uh, the woman I'm seeing, I was just trying to explain who Pete Seeger was. I mean, he was incredible. It's like, he would, back then he would have musicians on the stage that didn't speak English. And he would get like, it was, I don't know, it would be like rap. He would, just, he would just start a riff, and then they would take off, and then he'd get, a, uh, he'd get something going on stage, and it was, it was like rousing. And then he'd start like a, like, a, like a rap song, and just sort of, then he'd get the, the audience singing in three-part harmony, the men over the side, women over the side, you know, singing a cappella. He could, and then he, all of a sudden he had like a couple thousand people singing a song that he just invented. And it was always coming back to about how we can stay together and, and win over these issues. So it's being, that, that, you know, when I was, I don't know, 16, 17 years old, that really profoundly affected me that you could use art to change the world. And he did it. Uh, and he's, he was doing it decades before, you know, I came, you know, I was even alive. Um, so, but it was, being, you know, being with these people that really got me inspired. And then the first story I did for National Geographic, the Yellow Magazine, was a story I did on, on garbage. Now this is back in 1981, I think I proposed it, and there was only one mandatory recycling program in America. Now there's probably, you know, we could probably go underneath the desks here and there's recycling <laughs> there. And, but, uh, you know, the story I proposed was called Urban Ore. That's what I called it. And uh, basically I, was, I did a story on recycling back when nobody ever heard of it before. And this is the cool part, I think, about using film and photography as a, as a weapon of mass construction, you know, a way to change people. You know, you, if you can reach that, you know, Malcolm Gladwell says, who, you know, he wrote you know, the book Blink and uh, The Tipping Point, you know, he says you need about 16% of the population to have an unwavering belief in the truth before the rest of the people you know, fall oh, like wow. dominoes. You don't need half, yeah. you don't need 51%. You just need this, these, these, the small, these small yeah, group of people. That are unwavering. Some, yeah, and, yeah, and some people say it's 10, less than that, 10%. But with National Geographic, at that time, we had 44 million people that saw the magazine, and that helped you know, push those numbers. I'm not yeah. saying that was the tipping point. I'm saying it was part of, you know, we were part of that vanguard of people using it. So they could see, you could see that you could use that to, to create a tipping point. Now we're, you know, we've done it with The Cove, where, you know, and Blackfish, and, you know, that helped inspire that movie. And, and now, we're, you know, now it's not cool to go to dolphin parks. You know, nobody that had seen those movies would take their kids to see, you know, cetaceans abused, you know, the spectacle of dominance. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you, but you can see, you know, I take a little bit longer view. People say, dolphins. after the cove came out, I say, oh, they're still killing dolphins. I say, well, you know what? They didn't clean up the Hudson River, and, you know, it, it took a few decades. And, you know, hopefully now with social media, things can speed up. But that's, you know, you know now it's just the barrier to entry is pretty small. It used to be you had to, you know, you know, you had to have a National Geographic behind you to, to get a viral story out there. Now any kid with a camera can do it. You know, you can make a movie, you can make a, you know, take pictures, you can tell a story, you can write a song. It's not, a, it's not easy, but at least you have the tools to do it. Back then you had to have, you know, 
you know, one of the big five studios behind you. You had to have the, you know, be published by a major label to get get seen. Now you can, you know, you have a chance. 